Maybe you're a master jewel thief in the making. Maybe you just have a really bad memory. Either way, you may one day need to know how to crack a safe. The first safes were created almost as soon as humans had something valuable to keep other humans away from. Dating back to the 13th century BC, a primitive safe was found in the tomb of Pharaoh Ramses II. It was made of wood with a locking system that resembled a modern pin tumbler lock. However, it wouldn't be until the 16th century when what we would recognize today as a safe began to be mass produced, with the creation of cash boxes forged out of sheet iron. The design proved to be so good that they would serve as the model for mass-produced cash boxes in the 19th century. The 19th century proved to be a revolutionary one for safes, with the creation of burglar-resistant safes that included built-in locks. The idea naturally evolved to protect not just cash and precious metals or gems, but important documents such as wills or deeds, and in 1886 the first safe for important documents was created. This safe would not only keep documents safe from theft, but would also help ensure their survival in case of a fire. Modern safes typically come equipped with a combination lock, though new safes have switched from rotary dial locks to digital locks. Some can even be accessed with the owner's fingerprint, further aiding in their security. A modern safe must be burglar resistant, fire resistant, and resistant to environmental damage such as flooding or contamination via dust. Fire resistance is measured by the amount of time a safe can keep a delicate valuable protected from the effects of extreme heat, starting at half an hour, then one hour, two hours, and finally four hours. After four hours of intense burning, only very specialized safes can protect delicate documents from the effects of extreme heat. A fire-resistant safe must be able to maintain an internal temperature of less than 350 degrees for the time rated. Safes that protect electronic data, however, must be able to maintain an internal temperature not greater than 131 degrees, while in constantly heated environments in excess of 1830 degrees. Needless to say, that kind of protection does not come cheap. Burglary resistance is also measured in increments of time the safe is resistant to penetration, but also the types of tools used. Time ratings are measured as periods of persistent attack and start at 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. After an hour of persistent penetration attempts, only specialized safes can keep your valuables protected, though by that time, hopefully police have already responded to the burglary. Safes are tested for their durability and assigned a class, with Underwriters Laboratories being the most common rating agency in the world, though German, French, and Japanese laboratories also rate safes and their ability to protect the valuables within. A Class 125 safe is able to sustain an internal temperature of 125 degrees and 80% humidity for the amount of time the safe is rated for. This safe was introduced with the development of floppy disks, and as compact disks and other modern storage media is even more resistant to heat, these safes remain extremely safe for protecting electronic media. A Class 150 safe can sustain an internal temperature of less than 150 degrees and 85% humidity. A Class 350 safe can sustain an internal temperature of less than 350 degrees and 85% humidity. These types of safes are mostly for the storage of paper items as electronic media will be destroyed at those temperatures. So, how do you get into a safe if you've lost the combination? First, you have to understand how a safe's lock works. Combination locks have a large rotatable dial on the outside that's used to input the correct combination of numbers to unlock the safe. The dial is attached to a spindle, which has a drive cam at the other end. A drive pin extends from the drive cam and catches against the wheels inside the safe and makes them spin. These wheels, also called tumblers, are what translate a properly input combination. For each number in the combination, a safe has one tumbler, so a safe with a six-number combination has six tumblers. Resting atop the tumblers is a small rod called a fence. As long as this fence is resting atop the tumblers, the lock remains engaged and the door cannot be opened. Each tumbler, therefore, has a small notch or a gate at a specified point along its circumference, and this is where the fence must drop in order to release the lock. This is why you input numbers on a safe by rotating the dial in one direction and then rotating it in the opposite opposite direction for the next number. By rotating in the opposite direction, you disengage one tumbler and engage the next. Once all the tumblers are in the right place, the fence drops into the notches and disengages the lock. So, to get into a safe, first you have to determine how many tumblers there are, or how many numbers there are in the combination. First, you rotate the dial several turns in a clockwise direction. This will completely reset the lock and disengage all of the tumblers. Next, you want to get a stethoscope and listen carefully as you very slowly rotate the dial counterclockwise. What you're listening for is two clicks in rapid succession.
fashion. This is the sound of the drive cam notch sliding under the lever arm and thus moving into the right position for disengaging the lock. One of the clicks will be fainter than the other click as the notch is sloped toward one side. Once you've marked the number on the dial that produced the clicks, rotate the dial clockwise again several times to reset the lock and then begin to rotate the dial counterclockwise once more while listening for the double clicks. Make sure you make a note of the number on the dial where the double clicks are heard. Then move the dial counterclockwise 180 degrees so that you land on the exact opposite number on the dial. This is called parking the wheels. Now slowly turn the dial clockwise. As you pass the parked position, you should hear a click as the tumbler inside is engaged. As you continue rotating past the parked position, you should hear additional clicks. Each click is an additional tumbler and an additional number in the safe's combination. Some safes, however, are equipped with anti-cracking technology which prevents this from happening, at which point you'll need to resort to more violent methods to crack the safe. Once you hear no more clicks from turning past the parked position, you know how many tumblers and thus how long the number combination is. Now you'll need a pen and paper. Set up two line graphs and label each graph separately. On the x-axis of each graph should run from 0 to the highest number on the dial face. The y-axis only needs to cover a span of about 5 numbers. Label the first graph's x-axis starting position and its y-axis left contact point. Then label the second graph's x-axis starting position and its y-axis right contact point. Now reset the dial and spin it to 0. Then rotate it slowly counterclockwise and listen carefully. You're once more listening for the double clicks. And once you hear them, you'll want to note the exact position of each individual click, which will usually have a few numbers between them. On the left contact point graph, mark a point at x equals 0 since that's where you began turning the dial from, and then on the y value plot the number on the dial where you heard the first click. Repeat for the right contact point graph, labeling the y value where you heard the second click. Now reset the lock once more by spinning it clockwise and move it three numbers clockwise of zero. Record this new starting point as your next x value. Once more, listen for the double clicks and record each click on the y axis like you did the first time. You're going to repeat this process by setting the dial three numbers further each time you reset the dial. Eventually, you'll have mapped out the entire dial and filled your graphs with contact points. Now, you'll simply look for where the y values on each graph converge together. It's easiest if you can simply lay the graphs atop each other or have used different color ink and pencil for each different graph. Each point where the y values converge is a correct number in the combination. All you have to do is write down the x value where the y values converge. This will give you the exact number on the dial, but you still won't know the right order. For that, you'll have to simply try every possible combination of those numbers until one works. If you're having trouble with the numbers you recorded, try numbers adjacent to the ones you discovered. If you're dealing with a lock that has more than three numbers, you're going to need a lot of patience, as a three number combination lock only has 162 possible combinations, while a four digit lock has 1,944 possible combinations. Of course, if this doesn't work, you may need to resort to more drastic measures. However, this is going to require serious resources on your behalf, and a lot of time. Safes are purposely built to be very difficult to penetrate via mechanical means and are naturally very resistant. Your first bet would be to cut a safe open. Ideally, you'd want to do this with an industrial torch, the hotter the better. Air-fed torches max out at around 3,600 degrees, while oxygen-fed torches burn much hotter and can reach 4,600 degrees. Steel and carbon composite safes, however, have a melting point between 2,500 to 2,800 degrees, so this is going to be a very, very slow process. You'll also want good ventilation, as the fumes can quickly turn harmful to your health. You're better off using a plasma cutter or a thermic lance to cut through the safe, and both these tools can prove quite effective in cutting into even a modern safe. However, both of these pieces of equipment require a lot of specialized training to use effectively, and take it from the writer of this episode who used thermic lances to cut through doors in the military, these tools are extremely dangerous and create a lot of hazardous smoke in closed environments. You also run the risk of overshooting your cut and damaging the goods inside, which will melt like butter upon coming into contact with a plasma cutter blasting at several thousand degrees. You can attempt to cut into a safe, but you're going to run through several saw blades in the attempt. Industrial saws often have synthetic diamond teeth, but even these will dull out quickly from prolonged use against a tough composite safe. The preferred method of professional safe crackers is to simply cut a hole in the safe through which a small scope can be inserted. The safe cracker can then observe the locking mechanism directly and more accurately deduce the correct number combination by observing the movement of the fence and the location of the notches in each tumbler. In days past, one could even simply drill out the lock itself, thus neutralizing the safe, but modern safes make this all but impossible. Another method of getting into a safe is one you've likely seen before in the movie 
movies, jam shots are special explosives used to blow the doors off a safe and can also be very effective if not very subtle. First, you fold a piece of cellophane into the space between the safe's door and the frame. Then you use a bar of soft soap and knead it into a cup and funnel shape around the cellophane that you folded into the safe's door crack. Once in place, slowly pull the cellophane through the soap cup, cutting a channel into it. Now, place a blasting cap with wires connected to a battery igniter inside the cup and then pour the nitroglycerin into the cup and down the funnel. Then it's simply a matter of touching the wires leading to the blasting cap to the terminals of the battery. This will cause the blasting cap to explode which ignites the nitroglycerin that's flowed down into the space between the safe door and the safe, and it'll blow the door clean off the frame. You do have to, of course, make sure that the contents can survive the massive violence of a small explosion, otherwise the entire effort's pretty much moot. If you're dealing with a high-tech safe with an electronic lock, you're gonna need to figure out the numbers of the combination directly. Simply cover an object that the owner of the safe is going to touch with ultraviolet ink, and then after they've opened their safe once, scan the keypad with a black light, which will reveal their fingerprints on the correct numbers. A simple fingerprint dusting kit can also be used to achieve the same result. Now, you simply have to guess the right combination. Of course, you could also simply brute force the combination. On a digital safe, you can run a special program that runs through millions of sequences of number combinations until it hits the right one. This technique even works with rotary dial safes, as the invention of auto dialers have allowed safe crackers to brute force number combinations using a device that automatically dials out millions of possible number combinations. However, with an auto dialer, the process can be extremely slow, taking upwards of 24 hours to complete with a standard safe. Now, go check out Most Insane Diamond Heist, or click this other video instead. Dolphins are my favorite animal, though I've never met one.